I've been into 3D printing since 2014, when I bought a Delta 3D printer from GE Tech. It was a week-long project just to assemble the thing, with hundreds of parts and many plot holes in the instructions. It had a 160mm diameter heated bed and a cylindrical print volume with a 200mm max Z height. It was much faster than the bed slingers of the time because it used all three motors for every movement and it didn't have a moving bed which is heavy, achieving better acceleration. However, it was made of many acrylic parts and had weak links that made the whole structure quite fragile. Of course, running and maintaining it was equally painful, as many parts failed due to mechanical or electronic issues. In 2019, the 3D printing market was already shaking by Creality's Ender series, but I wanted something cheaper that I could easily modify and improve myself. Therefore, I upgraded my 3D printing game by purchasing an AlphaWise U20. It featured a large 300 by 300 by 400 mm print area, a full metal construction, and better electronics, making it a noticeable upgrade. While it printed fine out of the box, I soon began modifying it heavily. I added a second Z-axis for rigidity, converted it from a Bowden to a direct drive extruder, and replaced the build plate with a magnetic PEI sheet. Later, I even replaced all its electronics with a 32-bit mainboard and silent TMC stepper drivers, and I migrated from Marlin to Clipper firmware by adding a Raspberry Pi to run the Clipper server. This was a game-changer, as my $500 printer could now compete in quality with machines costing twice or three times as much, especially with the integration of features like pressure advance and input shaping for rigging compensation. After many extruder upgrades and burned mainboards, I decided to buy a new 3D printer. This time in 3D printing, acceleration is the name of the game, and Bamboo Lab has the lead. As always, I went for a cheaper alternative and bought a Creality Ender 3 V3 Plus. It has a similar print volume to my previous one, but uses a Core XZ design, achieving much greater acceleration than regular Cartesian printers. It's a much better machine with little room for improvement. However, there are almost no modifications you can make, as most of its parts are proprietary, even its extruder and nozzle. If anything breaks, which it inevitably will, you have to rely on the manufacturer. Even the bed's load cells, which are responsible for bed leveling, aren't available for sale anywhere. When mine started malfunctioning, I had to contact Creality for replacements. Thankfully, they provided all parts without hesitation, since my printer was still under warranty but I'm still nervous about what will happen when the warranty expires. So I decided to revive my old 3D printer, which is so heavily customized that very few parts resemble its original factory condition. I started by designing a large electronics enclosure to house the original 24 volt power supply and the rest of the electronics, as well as a few control switches I'll talk about later. I printed it in white PETG on my new printer, and it turned out flawlessly on the first try. Then I began the electronics assembly by securing all the boards inside the enclosure. The printer is powered by an SKR 1.4 Turbo from Big Tree Tech, along with a 24V UPS. This holds enough charge in its ultra capacitors to power the printer for a few seconds during an outage, which is enough time for the printer to save its exact state. The clipper server runs on a Raspberry Pi 4, which connects to the mainboard via USB. The enclosure is designed so that the Raspberry Pi and mainboard have their ports accessible for maintenance or other uses. I also added two back converters, one to power the Raspberry Pi and the other to power a DC fan for cooling the stepper drivers. Speaking of separate drivers, they are TMC 2209s configured to communicate over SPI. The Raspberry Pi's power is hardware controlled via a toggle switch to prevent voltage spikes from damaging it during power up. There is another toggle switch to power a 5.5mm DC jack that carries the power supply's 24V out of the enclosure, in this case to power an LED strip. I love creating time lapses with my 3D printers, 
I even tried it with my first Delta printer and my old DSLR camera using a custom shutter trigger back in 2014. For this build I implemented a more polished solution by using one of the main board's output pins to control a camera shutter via 2.5mm jack. I still need to tune the movement settings to reduce stringing during the time lapse, but it's a nice feature to have. After securing all the components, I started the tedious job of wiring everything as neatly as possible, reusing cables and minimizing their lengths whenever I could. I strongly believe that the most important part of every 3D printer is its extruder, which is why I got a special one from BQ, the H2 Lite. It's a direct drive, dual gear, all metal extruder with a high flow 0.6mm nozzle. I was a bit disappointed to realize it doesn't have what I thought was still the standard volcano nozzles, instead it uses a similar one with a smaller thread. This wouldn't bother me if BQ had replacements or spare parts in stock, but I wanted a 0.4mm and a 0.8mm nozzle and they didn't have any. I guess I'm stuck in the past thinking the V6 nozzles are still the standard. By far the trickiest part of restoring this machine was creating a proper x country plate for the new extruder. I tried several times and after many iterations I ended up with this design, which holds the extruder using only two M3 screws. For the bed leveling probe I opted to use an inductive sensor since I have a conductive bed. However, I can't seem to get an accurate bed mesh and I'm not sure why. I don't think it's necessarily the probe's fault, but it doesn't help that it's very tricky to adjust its height. After wiring the printer to the main board, it was time to move it to its final place. Load clipper onto the Raspberry Pi and the main board and try to print a Benchy. The first print was flawless as expected, so let's try a more challenging one by using the time-lapse feature. The results speak for themselves, a curly-haired Benji. Of course, the print settings need a lot of adjustment. But now I have a second printer that can slowly save the day when my main printer breaks down and I'm waiting for replacements. Mm -hmm. 